If you're <laughs> watching this right now and you haven't hit the like button, Billy, get on it. Bug your brother. Tell him to do the same. All right, All buddy. Right. Some bad news uh, for Blue Jays fans coming out last night. Ricky Tiedemann, the number one prospect in this Blue Jays system. Baseball America even put him as a top 30 prospect in all of baseball. He continues to move up the ranks. Lefty that hits 100 miles an hour with elite secondary stuff. You don't see that out of a 20-year-old very often. He was removed from the game in New Hampshire last night. He pitched 3.2 innings in the fourth. They removed him. He was the one who pulled himself from the game. Immediately Which, following a pitch. Immediately following a pitch. Now, honestly, bad news, but good news too, to see the kind of maturity out of a young man to know when something's not right mm -hmm. and not try and pick through it. Because we see it time and time again, injuries compounded by the fact that a guy goes out there and tries to pitch through it. Hag and Danner talked to us about this about how he felt something weird in his arm, went back out there and pitched another inning. And who knows if it actually cost him time on the IL, but that is not something you want to see guys do. So the fact that he was honest and came to the forefront about what's going on with his arm, good news for the Blue Jays. No real update on where he is at. Obviously, they're doing some testing to see what's going on. It is a problem with his bicep and his throwing arm. Not that there's ever good news if it's a tear or something like that, but as long as it is not the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's We just want to avoid these. We just yes. want to avoid these. So. No bad tacos. Um, okay. Well, this transitions well into checking in on our minor league system. Some of the guys that we've been keeping our eyes on. I know I just brought up Hagen Danner, friend of the show. One of those guys on the 40-man roster that this organization's excited about was a catcher, throws 100 miles an hour, became a pitcher to save his career. He's got a very good slider and a slightly above average curveball that has just been throwing hitters right off. He looked really good in spring training and then once again had an injury. Now, the good news is he's back. He's throwing three innings in New Hampshire, probably just kind of rehabbing and getting his arm right. He is going to be in Buffalo as soon as they feel that he is ready. And he is a guy that I truly believe can contribute to this team this year in 2023. He's got the stuff and he's not young. And when I, I mean, he's 25, but 24, you know, he's yeah. not, he 20, he's not a kid. Mm-hmm. So he does have the ability to uh, be in those yeah. high-pressure situations and deal I with it. I sent you this article from MLB.com. This was you did. Uh, a potential future closer for all 30 teams. Yes. And they went down team by team. Uh, Hagen Danner was their suggestion for uh, potential closers for uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. So we're not the only ones who love Hagen Danner. Uh, Haggy D. Haggy D, likable guy. And and he, one thing I do love about Haggy is that, you know, like when he got injured, I sent him a quick message and was just like, hey, man, see you on the IL again. All the best. And he was like, thanks so much, boys. Appreciate you. Next time you need me, once I'm pitching again, let me know. He, he And he's he's always been like this. He doesn't want to talk when he's on the IL, and that's 100% fine. But Fair enough. I, I concentrate on getting healthy. But, yeah, all the best to Haggy D. Fingers crossed. Would love to see him with this big league club down the road here. Sticking with the bullpen and the pitchers within this system that could contribute to the team in 2023, everyone's eyes have been on young Cuban, Yasser Zulueta. He is 24 years old. He has struggled with injury problems throughout his career, but has looked healthy, looked really good in spring training. What is Zulueta looking like currently in that AAA bullpen, Adam? Well, 13 innings pitched across five games. Uh, he's got an ERA of 554, five, not the best. Yeah. He's got a whip of 1846, not the best. Uh, walks per nine. This is what's getting him into trouble. 7.6 right now. Yes. 
Uh, and this is big is thing. good. Strikeouts eleven point one. Strikeouts per nine. You'll take that. But yeah, it looks like he's struggling with control. Uh, struggling with the long ball as well. He's given up eight home runs, but you know what? When you're behind in the count, uh, you're going to start giving up some hittable pitches trying to get yourself back into it. So This has been the big struggle with Zulueta is that he's walking guys and giving up the long ball. That's going to inflate your ERA every time. I mean, whip sums it all up. You cannot be giving up almost two walks or hits an inning and expect... Mm-hmm to come out of the other end successful. So Zulouette is still young, working it, uh, working to get things together. He's got the stuff. Everyone knows he has the stuff. We'll keep an eye on him as the season uh, progresses, right? Like, what do you I'm say? Just, I'm just laughing because Haggard Danner is not a kid. He's uh, not one of the young guys. And then Zulueta, oh, yeah. who's still young, is six months older than Hagen Danner. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Zulu. Uh, they're both 25, right? Uh, 25 and 100 days for Zulueta, 24 and 200 days for Hagen Danner. Okay. Okay. So. Well, then I- ignore the the young and old thing I just said. That's all right. I'm just totally throwing you under the bus. Anyways, this has been fun, Scott. I know you got to check out in like eight minutes. So we better yes. let you go. Well, let's let's wrap up real quick. Mitch White. Currently uh, rehabbing, does look like he's getting very close to being back. He's ramped up to about, I think last time he pitched was at four innings. So he is getting close. They are stretching him out as a starter. They're in no big hurry to bring him up to the big leagues because as soon as they do, they need to make some decisions in the bullpen. So we'll keep an eye on that. Finally, I do wish to bring up Spencer Horowitz, who is having himself a heck of a week in triple a currently left-handed bat first baseman plays a little bit of left field friend of the, of the show has made time for us here on the walk-off which is always appreciated uh he's hitting like 500 with an ops of, of over 1300 i know i kind of floated out on twitter would it be worth being all of our left-handed hitters are doing almost nothing with the exception of Dalton Marshall. Would it be worth maybe sending Nathan Lucas down who they haven't given any time to and bringing up Spencer Horowitz to see if they can catch lightning in a bottle. I don't think they're going to do it, but it's good to see the kid uh, putting up numbers. So last season at double a hit 297 uh, showed some power. This year, so far, 298. OPS, 872. Um, I would be... I mean, he plays first base, so yeah. Is there a log jam in front of him? Absolutely. Uh, I'd rather almost see us giving Spencer Horwitz a shot than strutting Brandon Belt out there. I am starting to feel the same way. I mean, listen, Brandon Belt's either got to put it together or, or they got to eat it, you know? Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, We'll see what happens. Anyways. All right. Well, go Jays. Hopefully uh, we see some wins in Pennsylvania. Thank you so much to the grounds crew. We always appreciate you following along and paying attention. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not on both the audio and the YouTube side of things. It's, of course, appreciated. We will talk to you for MLB Mondays. Of course, we'll talk a little Blue Jays, but mostly focused on the rest of the league. Long toss on Sunday. We've got some uh, big things to chat about with our panel. We're excited for that. That, of course, goes live 6 to 8 East. Feel free to join us. All the best, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Bye, Dad.